BBC One, Mary Rhodes presents Inside Out. The Office of Fair Trading has promised to investigate the high interest rates being charged by some money lending shops. But with a huge increase in the number of online and high street lenders, we decided to visit West Bromwich to find out what local people think. They're taking over our high streets, money lending shops that charge eye-wateringly high interest rates. And where you find the poorest people is where they seem to want to be most. This is a typical high street in 2012. It feels like practically every other shop is offering cash loans. This is all we've got in up West Bromwich now, as you can see, these cash lending places. It's actually spoiling this country, it's spoiling the town. The rate and that they're charging is wicked. Terrible, isn't it? I mean, you know, they make it, they seem to be making money, but nobody else does. They're all right, I don't use them specifically, I just walk past them. Like, I know that, that Street UK just opened up there, so that's about it, really. I was thinking about, I don't know, I do like wonder by them and look. It just draws you in, doesn't it? You know, it's easy, they make it too easy to get it now and harder to pay back. With families in financial crisis, are shops like this the answer to a prayer or the start of a nightmare in a country which already has one of the highest rates of personal debt? Every minute of every working day, one person go bankrupt. Earnings aren't going up, but inflation is. People in Britain owe nearly as much as a country produces. The interest paid in Britain on personal debts per day is 171 million, million pounds per day. What are they doing with all the money? <laughs> the increasingly popular payday loans intended to tide you over a short-term crisis are sometimes over a staggering 4,000% APR. The annual percentage rate was never designed to explain small sum, short term loans. And when you buy anything in the high street, you look at the price on the label, don't you, and the price of a payday loan between £10 and £30 for every hundred. Frankly, 4,000 odd percent isn't ethical, it isn't reasonable and it isn't necessary. Now it seems a rival is about to step into the payday market. The Six Towns Credit Union in West Bromwich is one of those hoping to push the high interest lenders off the high street. It's a popular place for savers and borrowers who become shareholders. Many had previously struggled to manage debt. Credit unions are fantastic and obviously they're good if you want a loan or if you're stuck or whatever. It's better than going to the um, payday loans and whatnot. So you could get into a lot of trouble with them, but you know where you stand with credit union. It can help you with like getting loans, so like if you're in debt or you know need to need some money somehow, they can help you with that, and they're really good. I had to use mine for rent, that's why I came here, signed it up and stuff, and yeah, they helped me, so I'm okay now. I've used it for taking kids on holidays. I've done my house. And do you think you'll bring up your kids to use credit unions? Yeah, they've already. Yeah. They've already got their shares in as well, so they're saving as well. Don Hackett has a poor credit history. He's had to take out several higher interest loans to meet life's emergencies. If Obviously, if I have the money in the bank, then I wouldn't have to do what I'm doing. But because I've got no other option, then I have to do it. A family wedding coming up could mean another loan, so Don agreed to come and take a look at what a credit union might do for him. Credit union, the maximum interest rate that we can charge is 26.8%. We're not allowed to charge anything more mm -hmm. than that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of companies are now starting to offer uh, payday loans. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd just like to show you some figures if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah. This is to borrow money over a one month period. If you borrow 500 quid, what you'd pay back at the end of the month is £684.25, <laughs> okay? So the interest that you've paid back is, is underrated. Right? Yeah. Now, if you borrowed £500 of us for exactly the same period of time, you'd pay £510 and a penny. 
in interest. Ten pounds and a penny. Ten pounds and a penny in interest as opposed to 184 pounds. <laughs> it is a scandal and at some point this government I think is going to have to regulate what the maximum rate of interest uh, is that can be charged. You know, it happens in most states in America and in Germany and Austria and so on, but not in this country. And of course, the bigger the, the, the loan that you take out, take out 1,500 quid for a month, uh, for just about a month, and you'll pay 552 pounds in interest. Sliders, that's how we roll here. Wonga, whose online figures were quoted, didn't want to give us an interview, but in a statement argued their loans are designed for short periods, keeping costs down and they're careful to check potential customers can afford any repayments. Yeah, Wonga says it makes it clear how much people have to pay and interest rates are not relevant. Customers typically pay a pound a day for every hundred pound borrowed. Wonga say they're turned down in a two-thirds of first-time applicants. There's a growing campaign for interest rates to be capped, but the industry says it would simply mean higher-risk customers would no longer be offered loans for what is often essential spending. Interest rate capping doesn't make loans cheaper, it makes them unavailable. Uh, and they've tried this in Australia, they're looking at it right now. And it meant that in Australia I wouldn't be allowed to lend you less than $2,000, £1,500. Pounds. What use is that to somebody who wants to borrow two or £300 pounds if the interest rate cap means I can only lend you £1,500 or £2,000? Pounds? It doesn't help anybody. In 2010, the Office of Fair Trading came out in support of high interest lenders. They said shops like this are a valuable part of the economy. They said customers of these shops have a lower than normal financial understanding. The Office of Fair Trading said capping interest rates could mean shops stop lending to high risk customers. So how realistic is the credit union alternative? Occasionally, credit unions do fail. Among them, Hansworth Breakthrough in Birmingham, which had fewer than 500 members. They blamed poor financial controls and the failure of some borrowers to pay back loans. For some, this illustrates the need to charge high interest rates because of the higher risks taken. Some of our borrowers um, regretfully uh, seemed rather forgetful about, uh, about repaying the money which they had borrowed from other members. It's completely against the ethos of credit unions, which are mutual enterprises, you know, people helping other people. Um, and it is a breach of, of trust. We do drive down very hard on people who do not pay, uh, both using bailiffs and using the DWP to recover money through benefits because it simply isn't good enough. If you're providing a service such as we do on the basis of keeping money within a local community and then end up with a situation where that money just gets drawn away by people who've no intention of paying. Credit unions emphasise money invested with them is safe and they say hundreds of successful unions with common bonds, such as where their savers live or work, prove that it isn't necessary to raise interest rates to make a profit. First of all, if you save with a credit union, every penny that you have saved is insured. Secondly, because we try to work on the basis of ethical savings and loans, over the last four years now, we have paid a dividend of 3.29% on savings, uh, which is just about the best deal on the high street for an instant, instant access savings account. As credit unions increasingly dip their toes into the payday loans market, the campaign for a cap on interest rates continues. The Office of Fair Trading has promised to take another look in the next few months.